Welcome, everybody. Jersey Baseball Show. We are here with Dylan Hoy, who is uh, repping Maris University, as we can see, one of the top hitters in the country last year. We are uh, he is at, at uh, Power Arm Ramsey right now, where he does the bulk of his offseason training. So we shout them out a little bit, too. And uh, we are hyped to talk to one of the best shortstops in the country. Thank you for coming on, Dylan. And, uh, and let's get to it. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's let's get right to Marist 2022. We saw, you know, you got to see what Fairfield did last year, not just one of the best, you know, the best team in the MAC, but but also one of the best teams in the country. Um, we know it's loaded this year with with some great talent at Monmouth and, and Ryder as well. And, you know, certainly Marist and you guys had a short season because of COVID last year. But, you know, why we got that vibe that, that this is going to be Marist year? Yeah, I mean, we have uh don't get me wrong, we did lose a few guys last year. We lost one to the draft, as everybody knows, Ryan Cardona, a uh, right-handed pitcher. He was a stud. He, he played a big part in our, our success last year. I mean, we, we were 18-9 and nine at the end of the day, and, and we had a very successful season. And, you know, besides the guys that left, we have a, a bulk of our guys returning, and we just have that special bond. And when we get on the field, it's just everything kind of leaves, and, and we just play the game the right way, you know. We – uh. Like I said, we have that bond and we just click and, and we know each other, which is the biggest thing. We know our tendencies, we know our strengths, we know our weaknesses. So that all comes together and, you know, we just we just click as a team. Did, uh, did all the, the craziness of last year, I mean, you, it took you an extra three weeks to get your season started. You had stops and starts along the way, probably had the second best record in the conference if you go by percentage, but the way they seeded the teams. You know, you ended up being the five seed in the in the first round because they just went straight by wins. You know, all that stuff and and having it taken away from a while a, a while. You mentioned the old an old group this year. Do you appreciate it even more now? Just the opportunity based on on how last year went. I really do. I mean, it's you start to realize once last year because our fresh my freshman year in 2020 got taken away pretty quick as everybody knows from COVID and we almost didn't play last year. Our, our school almost shut us down fully. So just getting the opportunity to play is truly a blessing. And with the group of guys we have, I'm just super ex excited, like I said before. And, you know, like you touched on with, uh, with the way we were seated last year it was unfortunate because we easily could have been the third or the second seed and, and had a home series. And I truly think that would have changed everything, the, the total outcome, but you know, we went over to Canisius and, and we put up a good fight. But in the end of the day, we kind of just, you know, we lost it at the end of the game, the third game. Yeah. Now, now tell us about your off season because you're Mr. Energy. You're, uh, you know, always, always excited. I mean, this is probably calm for you, even at 10 in the morning, you know, early in the morning. Um, let's talk about your off season. You know, last year put you in a position to get on a lot of draft radars and we'll talk about your. 2021 in a little bit but but tell us how it's been going you know what you're doing how we're dealing with the crazy uh covid um and uh what what's getting us ready to go yeah no i mean it's awesome uh every off season is a little similar for me like schedule wise um but what i work on it it kind of changes from off season to off season as you know you you learn things throughout the season about you know your body and, and how you play and little things to that you think you can get better at for the next season. Uh, but this off season, usually every morning I wake up around in between 5.30 and 6.30, so that, that range. I'll eat and then go to the gym, get my workout in. I usually like to lift in the morning because that's just, you know, I feel like I put up my most weight and, and my workouts are most efficient then because, you know, I don't have all that nonsense going on in my head or I haven't looked at my phone yet, so it's just get, get a start to the day and get going. And then usually after that, I'll eat again. I, I eat a bunch during the day. I probably consume about 4,000 to 5,000 calories just because that's what my body needs to maintain my weight and my muscle accordingly. Um, and then right after my lift, I'll get into a mental strength training. I actually talked to uh, John Hodson. I'm not sure if you've heard of him before. Mm -hmm. he's, um, he's working over at Mammoth now and doing a bunch of work with their athletes. And, and I think the mental game is so important because baseball, as many people know, it's a game of failure. So the more that you know how to deal with that and, and learn about yourself and know that when you fail, it's all right, it's normal. But to learn from that failure is so important because 
that's how you're going to get better because this game is it's a game of you know learning from failure and that's how you're gonna get better numbers or or get better at bats get better plays in the field and it just all correlates so once we're done with that i go straight into my hitting and fielding sessions and then following that i'll get into some running stuff i usually uh we have a running program that coach gave us at school that we do five days a week it's fluctuated between just coasting um some light jogging stuff and then getting into some sprinting days along with base running so it's a combination of all those three just to make sure you know this year we we're more of a, a base stealing team and a faster team we can make plays happen um and then after that i'll kind of you know hang low a little bit hang out just to get the body recouped and then i usually do another session of hitting and fielding again i usually like to get two or three sessions of that in per day just to stay at it and and that's really my whole day. So I'll be working from about six in the morning till eight or nine at night. And then I'll, I'll do that literally every day. And it's not so much just because I feel like I have to, but it's more so just because I love it. You know, I just love the game and, and love the whole process. So I can't, uh, I can't deny that. I was going to say, do they charge you rent at Power Arm at this point? Do you have like... <laughs> They, uh, they definitely want to. It's probably in the talks in their <laughs> office and, and their meetings. So. <laughs> that's right. But, that's right. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, like I like I told you before, and I don't mean to interrupt you or anything, but um, I've kind of been at multiple facilities, of you, as you know, and I've been at Power Arm and, and between Marist and stuff because my parents and, and grandparents have gotten COVID. So I had to, to relocate to Marist last week to work out, and then um, – a couple of people at Marist got it and I tested negative again. So I'm back here for this week. So just trying to stay, stay active and keep the process going for as long as I can. Absolutely. Now, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting to me that you mentioned of, of, of this being a, a game of fail of, of failure. And we've talked about the mental side of it a little bit. Your 2021 was really a bounce year from, you know, probably your first extended failure in 2020, yes. you know, that, I mean, every, I haven't met more than one or two freshmen who, who hop right in and just take off like they were still in high school. But, you know, like I said, it, no, no hiding. You were under 100 batting average as a, as a true freshman. Um, yeah. or you're behind off and, and, and obviously, you know, did it make a difference? I mean, does hitting 10th, you know, 10th in the country and batting average in D1 over 400 all year, and you know, second in the MAC. Um, what was the key for you and, and, and tell us about your, your 2021 season. Yeah. So, I mean, there was definitely some swing changes that I went through that I can, that I can get into. Um, COVID kind of allowed that to happen because, you know, all the summer leagues were canceled. I was supposed to go to the NECBL in the summer and, and play with the waves like I did this past summer, uh, but that got canceled. So I kind of stayed in a local field with a bunch of my high school guys that played division one ball. And we just went through a bunch of swing changes and, the biggest thing for me, though, was Coach Hodson. I got in touch with him, I want to say, probably two weeks into quarantine. Um, I, I reached out to him, and, and we kind of got things going with the mental side of the game. And that's when he introduced me to all these different mindsets and, and mind frames on how to accept failure and, and know failure is all right and how to learn from them. Because not a lot of people know, like, during my, uh, my freshman year when I was 442, that was beating me up pretty bad because I went from high school, as you know, hitting 380 to 420 every year. It's like, wow, this is awesome. This is how it's going to go. I'm, I'm going to make the majors with if I keep this up. Yeah. So, and then you go to college and it's like, all right, sweet. I got the starting spot. You know, I feel good. Um, I never usually take that stuff for granted. You know, I always keep working and keep going with the process, but I started to, to not hit. And I was like, I was getting really concerned about it. I was, I was like, oh my God, what's happening? So then I started to swing at pitches I normally wouldn't get over anxious. And, and now each game, instead of going to the game, like, how are we going to win today? I'm like, how am I going to get my average up today? So it was just a whole kind of mindset change that I went to. And it wasn't the best, but I'm, I'm really thankful for it because it's taught me so much more and it's meant so much more to me because I feel like if I didn't experience that and if I – if I did hit 400 my true freshman year in that 2020 season, I feel like I probably wouldn't have worked as hard in the summertime because I would have been like, yeah, you know, I had a great season. I'm not going to change anything. There's no need for yeah. me to develop when there clearly was. So um, between Coach Hodson and, and me talking about that 
that kind of mental switch that I had, I noticed that in my swing mechanically, I was very upright. So I was standing up tall and my hands were, were literally right here. So when I would swing, I'd come down to the ball and I'd almost chop down at it. And to start off, the pitches I, sw I was swinging at were, weren't the best, but the main problem was that I was coming down and, and cutting out of the zone so quickly. So I kind of switched to getting in my legs more. I would, I would get into, a lot of people say their launch position, so where they land. So I would start from that position and lower my hands a little bit and just focus on that clean turn. I tried to get in the zone late earlier and stay in the zone as long as possible. And I was just working on that every day, every day, taking videos, um, using this one app that you can draw like lines on and circles. Mm -hmm. And I just got after it every day and to a point where I felt good and felt consistent. And I just took that into the 2021 season. And along with that mental strength training, and it kind of all clicked as people could see. Yeah, so, so interesting question for me because you work hard every day. How long did it take? Because, you know, you make those changes and there's a lot of thought going into it and you've got to kind of internalize it so it just happens. How long did it take really for you to click so that you weren't really thinking about it? It just, it just happened. I would honestly say I started that. So COVID hit mid-March and I started working on that in April and it didn't click until I could not think about it until truthfully about August, mid August. And it just took so long because I was swinging that way my whole life that yeah. I was upright and my hands were moving down and I was cutting out of the zone. But you know, in high school, when they're throwing 82 to, to 85, you can get away with that. Cause yeah. you know, it, it's flat and it's not moving that much and the curveballs aren't sharp. They're kind of loopy. So you're able to get away with those things without really knowing, you know, and until until it clicked there was a lot of frustration don't get me wrong it wasn't like all right i know i have to do this it was a lot of figuring out because first i moved my hands really down and then i tried to pick them back up and yeah. it took probably until i want to say june until i found where i wanted to be and then it took another two months until august till it was actually memorized yeah and and, and i asked that question because so many people out there just think that you can you know, fix these things quickly, you know, or get frustrated when it, it doesn't happen quickly. And, you know, we're talking about, you're talking to one of the best hitters in D all of D1 last year, making these changes. And it took really four months of, you know, not just four months going to the cage and taking 30 swings once a week, but, but like legit every day during COVID, I'm working hard by myself to, to get things done. And it's, it's just a process and it's so process driven that you can't, if you want real changes, you can't expect them to happen quickly. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, so the man, and then the mental side of it, the thing that gets me is right. I, I've never met, and this is all the way through the majors, a guy who's never, who's played this game and never gotten slapped in the face like that at some point, you know, it's just not possible. Right. I mean, yeah. for the really good guys, it doesn't happen till college or for the, really sick you know one first round guys maybe it doesn't happen till the pros but it always yeah, yeah. it happens right and I, I think you realize or you learned it's you know it's how you react to it that, that defines you yeah no 100 percent. i mean i like how you said um you know it's going to hit everybody at some point because you know if I was living in almost this world of unrealistic unreality, because I was like, Oh, it's never going to hit the fan. I'm different than that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, I wasn't facing the truth of, you know, it really is a game of failure and, and don't get me wrong. You're not going to look at the game and be like, Oh, I failed. Okay. That's fine. Like you're, it's natural to have like, all right, I don't want to fail. Like that's a natural feeling. You're good. Right. You know, every, nobody wants to fail. But once you get to like the realization that, you know, when you fail, you don't get frustrated and fed up, but you, you rather take it to learn from it. That's when I feel like my game stepped up and that's when many other people's games are going to step up because, you know, you're just accepting, accepting the fact, but you're also going to learn from it. So Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not a game of failure so much because it's, if you if your basis of success is only your batting average, you're pretty much always going to be a failure because a lot of guys hitting over 500. Yeah, you know? no, that's it's just that's very true. 
how do you define success though? Seems to me like the thing, like, okay, fine. If I'm getting a hit, sure. That's success. But also what am I learning? What am I taking away from each at bat? I can, I can have a good at bat two thirds of the time. Doesn't mean I'm going to get a hit two thirds of the time. You know, it, I think you kind of, as you go up the ladder and, and the game gets tougher, you kind of learn how you define success too. No, hundred percent. I mean, I have, I actually dug into that a little bit um, this summer because, you know, I wanted to figure out like so many of these guys are, are successful, but I want to define success in my own way. Like you said, so kind of how I'm going about it now is obviously, yes, I do want to hit well. I, I want to field well and, and baseball is based on numbers, but really what I'm starting to figure out now is my success is how am I helping the team today? How am I t helping them as an organization? How am I helping Marist as a university? How am I, how is I helping the way as a, as an organization, not only win, but just get better every day. Like how am I helping my teammates get better? How am I helping my coaches? You know what I mean? And, and I just try to look at it that way because you know, if I'm constantly helping and, and being a, a good teammate or, or a good player, I think that's success in itself right there. Yep. And then this summer, you, you do finally get that experience in the in the NECBL and the Ocean State Waves and a great organization. And, you know, obviously the average dips a little bit because, again, I've never seen a guy hit 410 in the NECBL over a summer, um, you know, playing wood bat, playing some of the elite guys in the country. What do we take away from that other than I've seen a lot of content and you're having fun every day and doing some great stuff? Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, I really took away the, the value of the game because, you know, there are points in the summer where, you know, you're not doing as well as you would like to, because like I said before, it was it was a numbers game. And, you know, you just you just can't take everything for granted because you're playing every day and, and you don't realize how fast it goes, you know, because it was feeling it feels like yesterday that I, it was June 2nd and I showed up and all of a sudden it was July 30th and we're done. So, I mean, just yeah. just truly living in that moment and taking the taking the time to enjoy with your teammates and and truly enjoy those experiences to face the top guys in the country. I, I faced a lot of guys from Duke, Kansas, all these big schools. And I was just able to, to learn about myself and to learn about these players and, and just truly develop as a player. So yeah. I think I'm going to take, take all that stuff that I learned and, and I've applied it in the off season and I'm looking forward to applying it this season and, and see, see how that goes. Hopefully we, uh, we can win a championship. It's Absolutely. And, and, and you talked about, you you know, just kind of defining your own, you know, success for yourself and, and your process. And I think that's a great lead into the uh, the Create Yourself uh, movement, your your shirts that we ran through on the opening. I'll, I'll throw it up again here while we're talking about it. But Create Yourself, the the, the slogan, the, the DH3 logo, um, you know, your apparel. Why is that important to you? And, and, and what does that mean? Yeah, so I mean, the whole um, the whole thing behind Create Yourself was, it was just the whole idea of being your own person. You know what I mean? Because so many people watch these videos online of, of other guys and they're like, oh, I want to be, I want to be him. Or they see these guys, you know, for instance, in baseball, like, oh, look at his swing. I want to swing like him. So they try to copy his swing. But that just works for them. Like everybody has to be their own version of themselves to you know, the destination can be the same. There, there's obviously 600 people in the majors, 600 players, but they all had different journeys and different destinations. So whatever that is to each person and just knowing that it's, you know, productive to be your own person, that's that's the best way to go. And actually, I, uh, what's up, bro? I, um, I got a tattoo. It was actually my first one and it's an arrow. And on top of it, it says create yourself. So that's where the, that's where the whole design came from on the t-shirts. And on the back, it says uh, DH3, which is my personal logo. Okay, so the tattoo came before the design, or the tattoo was the basis of the design, not the other way around. Yep. Okay. But yeah. no, still, it's a, it's a great shirt. It's a great design. It's a great, you know, philosophy. And I think too often we get caught up in basing our journey based on what we see of other people's journeys, whether it's on social media, which is completely fabricated to the point that that person wants you to see, you know, and, and it's not, none of that is real. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, you've got to, you've got to have enough confidence and trust in your own and, and it, like I said, create yourself and be your own person. And I, I love that. hundred percent. Let me ask you this first here. 
your favorite moment or your proudest moment on the field at this point? What was that? Uh, we go in summer ball or, or spring or just in general? We're talking about the life of, of, of Dylan Hoy, the official, the official story here. <laughs> So I mean, one of my one of my best moments I have to say was uh, was this summer when we were playing Team Israel, and this was more of a personal standpoint. Um, you know, we went out to play Team Israel. We had Danny Valencia playing first base, Ian Kinsler, two longtime big leaguers, and you don't know what to expect. You know what I mean? You don't know if they're going to be you know nice guys or or whatever. And we're playing Team Israel, which is technically you know a professional team because they're all professional athletes and I didn't know what to expect from them if they were going to be you know nice to us or want to talk to us or if they were going to kind of you know big league us but um, I had a home run in that game I had a double and I made a few nice plays and, and one of the plays was a sliding play against Danny Valencia he had a ball in the hole I slid caught it and then threw it the first and after the game I was actually I was able to talk with uh, Valencia one-on-one -on -one, talk with Kinsler one-on-one -on -one, and talk with their head coach and, you know, obviously they said some nice things to me and all that, but it was just great, a great experience to talk to them and, and to kind of pick their brains about their journey and how it was in the big leagues. And it was just a really unique moment because it's not every day that you get to talk to a big leaguer, let alone play against them. So that was a, that was a very memorable moment for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you, there, there's buzz, obviously, from from above, from the pros, you know, on the draft, from the from the scouts, and you've been in front of them, and you know, all teams have seen you. How do you? Because that's every kid's dream, obviously, and I'm sure that's been yours since you were a, a little Dylan, you know, back uh, back in the day. Um, how have you been able to block that out and take care of business? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely hard, you know, because. At the end of the day, it's every kid's dream to to get drafted and, and work their way to the pros. You know what I mean? And and for me, just even being in the conversation and even having these guys consider me to be a draft pick this year is just a blessing, you know, in itself. But what's really helped me is is kind of three standpoints. I have obviously, you know, Matt Murata, he's um, owner of Power Arm and everything. And just the fact that he's able to talk to a bunch of scouts and, and take that pressure off of me because um, they're going to relay a lot of stuff through him is great. And he's obviously helped me throughout that process. Um, Tommy Barbello is another one. He's uh, he's helping me a lot this year. He, uh, he's over at NES Sports Facility, and, and he owns his own agency, Prime Sports Agency. So he's helping me a lot out there. He's, uh, he's talking to a lot of scouts, and they're going through him for that. So that takes, you know, like I said before, a lot of pressure off me because now I'm not focused on – constantly talking to scouts and talking to them they're just they're keeping them updated sending them videos letting them know how how I'm doing and everything like that and, and the same goes for my head coach over at Marist coach Traz um, he's been great through this he's been very open about the process and and open to me on you know just relaxing and, and going out and playing my game and good things will happen you know because the more yes it is your dream but the more that you force it to happen and, and you're trying to make it happen the more tense you're going to be at the end of the day so, I mean, just the, uh, just the faith and the trust that he's had in me to, you know, for me to go about this process and, and just to play shortstop for him every day because, you know, going back, you know, I did hit under 100 for my freshman year. So a lot of coaches at these schools would be like, oh, I don't, I don't want him to play for me anymore. You know, he's, you know, he's talking about the draft and he just hit under 100 this year. But, you know, the, the trust that, that he has in me and, and allowed me to start again at shortstop my sophomore year and, you know, it allowed everything to kind of fall into place. So, so to have those people in my corner and, and just to be in this situation is a blessing for sure. Definitely. We see the excitement going on in the background, another busy day at power arm. We know you want to get out there and get after it before we do um, leave us with something here. You're always obviously hyped to get up at five 30 every day. Like I said, Mr. Energy, Mr. Excitement. Talk about just tell us, you know, how blessed you are to, to have this opportunity and how much gratitude and excitement you have for every day. Yeah, no, I mean it's just you just gotta remember for for everybody who's listening, or you know, you don't have to be an athlete or you can just be living your daily life, going to work. You just gotta be, you know, thankful and you know, blessed that you have the opportunity to wake up every day because you know, 
not everybody gets that opportunity, sadly, as it is. And I'm not trying to make things sad or, or anything like that, but you just got to not take it for granted, but just, just know that when the opportunity arises and you wake up in the morning, just take full advantage of that and, and give it everything you got, whether it's, you know, going from your nine to five job or, or going to, to work out and hit today, just, you know, don't leave anything behind. Just, just go out and, and work as hard as possible each day and just follow the process. Yeah. Again, Dylan Hoy here, our guest. You know we are huge fans of, of you, not just as a player, but but being a better person than you are on the, on the field, which is pretty darn good. And, uh, you know, we're wishing you the best, obviously, this year. And I don't know if we're going to make it all the way up to Poughkeepsie, but, but certainly, thankfully, the MAC means you get to come closer to us. So we can't wait to watch you this year. No, I truly appreciate it. And I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to... Uh to chat with me and i'm looking forward to seeing you guys this season out there let's go right dylan hoy our guest create yourself get yourself one of his shirts before he becomes big and famous and uh we appreciate the time you spend here on the uh, on the jersey baseball show we'll see you guys next time